Hi guys, today we're combining one of my favorite things in the world. I'm one of those people that I'm the first one that shows up at a party because I want to eat all the food first. <laughs> I don't care if I look fashionably late, it doesn't bother me. Um, I just want to eat. So, and I love when people have the big fruit and cheese platters out. And I decided I'm going to make that into a pizza. You're going to have a little stinky cheese, little sweet fruit. We're going to make it really good. A yummy little appetizer, entree, whatever you want to do. Great with cocktails. So first of all, I want you to get a pizza crust. Now, if you can avoid using the pre-baked ones already, I would really appreciate it. You can get fresh pizza crust at most grocery stores. Even if you get that roll, the Pillsbury roll that you roll out, that's perfect. We got some fresh pizza crust here. See, we just kind of rolled it out nice and thin. Let me show you. Get a little flour on your board. Take your fresh dough. And here's a little trick I learned from some chefs that charge a lot of money for food. If you're pizza crust is ugly. If you can't get it that perfect circle or anything like that, just call it rustic and people think you're a genius. So this is going to be our rustic flatbread today. And just roll it out nice and thin. And what you're going to do now is you're going to get it on a baking sheet, throw it in the oven at 400 degrees and let it bake for about 10 minutes so it gets a nice light golden brown. So I'm going to move this out of the way because I have one ready to go for you to see. So I got this pizza crust. It's been cooking for about 10 minutes. It's our rustic pizza crust. See how it's nice and golden brown along the sides? That's what we're looking for. Now in this pan here on my stove, I went ahead and melted down two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now that is one of my cardinal rules in life, unsalted butter 100% of the time, all the time. Unless you're spreading it on toast or pancakes, I'm fine with that. But other than that, don't let anyone else season your food. Season your own food. I'm slicing up some pears, but I got to tell you, during apple season, I know a lot of you go to the apple orchards, pick buckets and barrels and laundry baskets of uh, uh, um, apples. Go ahead and use apples if you like, but I really like the taste of pears in this. So I got a couple pears. I'm going to slice them up nice and thin, get them in my unsalted butter. Let's do one more. Let's get a bunch of apples in here or pears and just make a lot of noise. It's the kitchen. Julia Child, she has no problem throwing things around, making lots of noise. It's the kitchen, people. Don't be intimidated by it. All right, let's slice these up real quick. Notice how I'm holding my knife correctly. My finger is not on top of the blade. That's a rookie mistake. I'm grabbing the blade, keeping my fingers out of the way. That's a mistake you only want to make once, if ever. I've made it many times. All right, let's do one more side here. Let that start caramelizing down. Now that unsalted butter has gotten to kind of like a nice, you know, light brown, beautiful color. So what I want to do, make sure all the pears are coated. And this will not take long at all to do. And now once all my pears have the butter coating on them, I'm going to add some brown sugar in there. What we're doing right now is making a beautiful caramel. So just a couple tablespoons of brown sugar. See how carefully I measure this? Just cooking people, don't be scared about it. Nice and easy. Go ahead and stir that around and let that brown sugar dissolve right into the unsalted butter. And like I said, I don't want you uh, having anyone else flavor your food, so of course with my fingers, go ahead and use a little salt over the top. Now people, you need to realize that salt is not just a seasoning. Salt actually has a function, it opens the taste buds. So that's why uh, salt in desserts is such a big deal right now because it makes Salted caramel, it makes caramel taste like caramel, you know, really strong. So for me, the little bit of salt is going to bring out the flavors, open up the taste buds. Let that sit for a minute. Let's get the rest of our stuff together. Now, for me, I love stinky cheese. I love a strong blue cheese, but not, not everybody does. So if you want to play the safe route, go ahead and get a nice block of gorgonzola or crumbled gorgonzola. You're still going to get that kind of stink that you get with the blue cheese, but it's a lot milder and a lot sweeter. So I just do thin slices. Just kind of crumble it over the top of your flatbread. The reason we pre-bake this flatbread, this is a lot of heavy stuff going on here. And if we were just to put it on raw pizza dough, it would sink right to the bottom. You wouldn't get that crust that you want. And everything's going to be cooked already anyway. We're just trying to melt it all together. All right. That should be good on the cheese. Now, if you really don't like stinky cheese, you can just use a mozzarella or a goat cheese. That's totally fine. But this... If you're scared of cheeses that have a little stink to them, I'm going to be honest with you. We've got a sweet caramely syrup. So if you're ever going to try it, now's the time because this is going to offset it. Oops, man overboard. So now all you're going to do is throw this right over the top. Get that caramel in there. Look at that. Oh, love it. 
Go ahead and spread that around. And the last thing we're gonna put on top of here, because whenever you have those fruit and cheese platters, you have a little cheese, you have a little fruit. Now we need a little nuts. So I'm gonna grab some uh, pecans. Walnuts work really well. And don't worry about toasting them ahead of time because they're gonna go right in the oven right now and they're gonna toast on their own. So just get your uh, tip of the knife right in the middle of the board, rock back and forth. And we're gonna get these uh, beautiful pecans right over the top and that's gonna add a really nice crunch. Just like that. And like I said, we have already cooked everything. All we're trying to do is get this in the oven and let this all kind of melt and get all gooey and warm together. So let's get this in the oven and lucky for you, I have one ready to go. Oh, that smells good. So this is what we're looking at here. See it all melted together, got all caramelized. Now I don't want you serving this to guests right now. This is a lava hot, that's a caramel on there. Please let that sit for at least five minutes. Otherwise, um, people won't come back to your parties. So now, it's all about getting a little garnish on top of here, not just for aesthetics, but because chefs think that way. Now you got a lot of heavy stuff, you got syrup and this blue cheese, this gorgonzola, heavy crust. Let's get some freshness on top to kind of lighten the palate. For me, I have a choice. Uh, you can do chives, really nice chives, or green onions, the green part right over the top. Or for me, just some flat leaf parsley. Just get some flat leaf parsley, do a nice rustic chop on it. Let's call it rustic so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna sprinkle that over the top. It's gonna make it nice and light. Add a little freshness. And we're gonna go ahead and throw this on my platter. You can chop it up however you want. You can make it nice small squares. You can do big ones, doesn't matter. For me, I'm just gonna throw it right on there. Woohoo! that's what I'm talking about. There we go. Fruit and cheese platter on a plate all together. Tell me that's not a beautiful gourmet appetizer that comes together in just a couple of minutes. All right, guys, I know you want this. See if you can smell it. I'm trying to get the smell to you. Enjoy it. We'll talk to you soon. Right back to you.